lots of discussion around microplastics, mm -hmm. right? So tell me what your impression is of the effect of any or all of the above on fertility. So although sperm are made constantly and are susceptible to that, we know the testicle is a pretty good place, excuse me, and insulated from, from exposures. I... I'm also, I also think there's a lot of smoke there and there needs to be, it needs to be sorted out, but especially with the 80, 60 to 80,000 chemicals that are being used that aren't really tested at all. I think the only way to know is to do, do, you know, stem cell in vitro testing as much as you can before you put it on at the ID investigational drug stage, not at the final stages for clinical trials, but early on do it. So you're screening them way in advance of getting it to clinical trials and when the money gets big. But I think that men, there are windows of susceptibility in men, unlike maybe with women whose eggs are constantly exposed to toxins. Men have windows, and one of those windows is birth and early development, the first 12 weeks of life. So there's a good data. early? When, when all organ systems are developing, including testicles, uh, I mean, Shauna Swan did this one, with maternal beef consumption, uh, estrogenized beef consumption, their sons had lower sperm counts when they were 20 years later or something. So, so I think that's a window of susceptibility. I also think, um, you know, puberty is a window of susceptibility when things turn on. So I think if exposures in those moments are probably going to matter the most to men. I don't know. I don't know about other times. And what is your advice to a guy when you're giving him counsel on everything he can do. We're going to talk about everything, but on this particular domain, if he says, hey, should I stop drinking Starbucks coffees in those plastic cups with the plastic lids? And do, should I get a reverse osmosis filter in the house? Like, where are you telling him to draw that line? I'm not great at that because the stress level goes up so much. And I think the stress- Counterback balances any amount of microplastics you save. You double the stress in a man and testosterone level will fall. Yeah. And then the sperm production falls for a whole different reason. So my my I'm my, careful, testo my testosterone level when I uh, left residency. Oh, I bet. Um, I, so how old was I? Thirty three. Should have had a pretty good. Yeah. Total T two hundred twenty nanograms per deciliter. Did you measure LH? It's um, probably low. Yeah, I'm sure FSH and LH were totally low. Right, I don't remember what they were. Secondary free testosterone of like so think three to four. Yeah. Your, well, the sleep deprivation, the stress, the so. What does stress do? Stress is the sympathetic nervous system. It's fight or flight. You're running from a woolly mammoth. It doesn't know what you're running from. It doesn't know whether it's sleep or travel or financial or emotional. It's just the body. It's, we are cats and dogs. We have the same binary nervous system. Either you're on or you're off. And when you're on, do you want testosterone? No, you want cortisol. You're running for your life. And do you want fertility when you're running for your life in any species? No, you're trying to save your life. So cortisol goes on, testosterone is nowhere to be found, fertility is nowhere, you turn off all that stuff. Then when you outrun the woolly mammoth and you're behind a rock and you grab the berries and you catch a nap, boom, testosterone shoots up because it's rest and restore and you have to rebuild for the next run. And That's how quickly build, do you think that primitive. occurs in humans? How quickly? Yeah, how quickly oh, can that- Days, easily. We can reverse- Chronic it. stress. Yeah. Is, is it, it's not, we love acute stress. All species love acute stress, right? We love that starvation, intermittent fasting. It's really healthy, but not low level chronic stress, not connected to your computer, not your emails, not the work day that never ends. Terrible for us. And the best manifestation is erections because the erections will fall if you're under stress too. Penis has a mind of its own, according to Da Vinci. I had a guy come in, you know, um, he came in, he was like 25 in San Francisco, and a startup guy, and he comes in and says, I got to see you. I said, why? He said, I lost my erection yesterday. He's 25. He said, first time? He said, yes. I said, all right, come on in. <laughs> so he comes in and he's got his act together. looks good. And I said, what happened? He said, I, you know, I just, I, I, I just lost my erection. I get, it's never happened to me before. I think something's wrong. I said, okay, tell me about yourself. He's just getting his A round of funding. He's traveling half a million miles a year. He sleeps like three to four hours a night, if any. And he's constantly running. And I said, congratulations. Welcome to the human race. This Amazing it's the first point. time, yeah. I know. And he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> You're not impervious. Stress, stress has its effects. So clearly, the fertility, women 
who are sort of marathon runners. Oh, the great study was a moderate exercise, moderate exercise men. Uh, I wrote a blog on this called, Can You Be Too Fit to Be Fertile? Moderate exercise uh, went to extreme exercise, measured as two hours a day of VIO2, 80% maximum capacity. So pretty heavy workouts for 12-week periods. So moderate to extreme and then back to moderate. Sperm counts fell by 40% when moderate to extreme and concert sperm uh, testosterone fell by 50% and then went back up. So that's a kind of a, and there's also military studies of men under acute stress during, uh, during you know, hell weeks and, and training where they were taking their testosterones and LHs and they were dropping by about 50% with severe stress. And that's okay for a day or two or a week. But when you're doing it chronically, we're not built for that, Peter. We're not built for chronic stress. That's a longevity issue. I'm Peter Atia. This podcast relies exclusively on premium subscribers for support, which allows us to provide all our content without taking a single penny from advertisers. I believe this keeps my content honest, making it a trusted resource for listeners like you. As a premium member, you'll get immediate access to our entire back catalog of AMA episodes and all future AMA episodes. You'll get longevity-focused premium articles packed with actionable insights, You'll get unrivaled show notes for each and every episode of The Drive, every topic, every study, every resource from each episode carefully curated for you. You'll get quarterly podcast summaries where you'll learn my biggest personal takeaways from the previous 90 days of expert guest episodes and much more. This journey doesn't have to be navigated alone. We can take these steps towards a better, longer life together. Become a premium member today at peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe to join me in a shared commitment to a healthier future.